This is Cosmodrome. Originally this was a case with two rows about 70 centimeters wide and that got full so I built in addition the third and bottommost row here and now that's full. So it was time to build another case. So, here's another case. Now this is somewhat like what Cosmodrome used to be before I put the third row on. Two rows about 70 centimeters wide. And uh, the difference is there's more of a uh, front piece here covering up space underneath this row because there's this power supply here. Now this is a power supply that I bought last winter. It's a Bell Power System 15 amp plus minus 12 or plus minus 15 volt linear power supply. And uh, thought I'd try using that in this case here. So let's take a little closer look at some of this stuff. Let's start with the back. There's a hardboard back screwed on here. Uh, you can see down in this corner there's a separate piece of hardboard housing this AC power inlet, which means I can, you know, remove most of the back here without disturbing the power inlet at all. Power inlet is, uh, you know, it's got a place to plug in the AC power cord and it has a built-in switch with an LED and it's got a, in between, it's got a uh, fuse holder. Because definitely with a power supply like this, you do want to have a fuse. So it's uh, specified by Bell Power, and it's a good idea. All right. Around in front. The case itself, I should mention that I'm not showing you this case because I want to show off what a truly outstanding woodworker and general case builder I am because I am not. I just kind of wanted to show you something that kind of more or less works and maybe gives you some ideas for how you might want to build a synthesizer case. Anyway, this uh, this case here is made out of uh, dimensional select pine lumber on the top and sides and front here. Uh, the stuff in the back here is common pine. It's put together using um, pocket hole screws and stained. You notice the stain is, um, first of all, a lot darker and second of all, a lot blotchier than the stain on the first case. I'm not sure of all the reasons for that. I do know I used a different brand of stain for this stuff. And... Uh, Probably be a good idea if I remembered what brands of stains they were, but anyway, not the most beautiful stain job in the world, but it's it's okay. Better than nothing, right? Right. Um, yeah, and then there's rails. Some people like to use, especially in the Cosmo community, like to use wood rails with uh, wood screws for mounting the modules. Not my preference. I like to have the extruded aluminum rails, even though it's a, definitely a much more expensive option, but I like it better. These are Vector TS-600 rails. You can get a package of four of these, 60 inches long, um, for somewhere in the neighborhood of 65 to $80, dollars, I think. Uh, and, you know, what what you see here basically is two out of those four from the package uh, cut in half and mounted here. That's what determines the width of the case. I didn't want to cut the aluminum any more often than I had to, so I just took what I had, cut it in half. That's the width of the case. These use these slide nuts. Since we have metric spacing for Cosmo modules, you can't really use 
the threaded strips that you sometimes see. So we've got slide nuts, and then I'm using these uh, Defaco Nurleys, which are uh, ridiculously expensive, really. But they are by far and away better than anything I've ever found otherwise for attaching modules. I just like them a lot. And so I suck it up and I pay the price. The power supply, you remember the inlet on the back. This is the other side of that. We've got a plastic electrical box mounted over that to cover up the terminals here. And we've got the uh, power cable going into here. It's going into this orange 3D printed thing, which I printed to uh, cover up a slot at the bottom of this power supply where otherwise wandering fingers might be able to get in and encounter 120 volts. So that prevents that. And then this is the plus minus 12 volts in ground output going from the power supply up to this barrier strip here and then wires from the barrier strip going up, 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 and over to the bus board that I have mounted here. Mounted it with um, zip ties, which looks a little funky, but I actually like doing it that way. It, uh, it puts less strain on the board than if you try to screw it down, but it holds it pretty securely. Works just fine, besides which, uh, the screw holes I've gotten here would need number six round head screws and um, I'm having trouble finding those locally so so zip ties it is yeah and back to the power supply just mentioning it's uh, there's open sides on this chassis here and here but they're up against the side and front wood of the case and it's attached via these long machine screws to this aluminum sheet at the bottom and the earth ground is connected to the chassis so uh, everything 120 volts is tucked away inside here uh, inside a grounded enclosure so it should all be fine and safe. The only module we've got here now is a power display it's got nothing in there but two LEDs, two resistors uh, three test points, ground, 12 volts, minus 12 volts. And so if we plug in the cable and flip the switch and yay, the LEDs come on. There's also LEDs on that board there. So yeah, it powers up and hopefully this will all work just fine once I start loading up the modules. That's the new Cosmodrome case.